All right, welcome back party people. About 18 months ago, I created a video on blind fasteners. I covered these bulbed threaded inserts as well as these T-hangers. Now blind fasteners are useful for attaching or affixing things to a wall or structure if you don't have access to the reverse side. I also showed how to create a DIY tool to install the bulb threaded inserts. Today we're going to cover 11 additional fasteners that you can use in your van build out. So let's get started. So our first fastener is the good old wood screw. You can see it has somewhat coarse thread per inch or TPI. Also notice the shank. The threads do not go all the way to the head of the wood screw. There is part of the shank there left threadless and therefore that smooth shank there allows you to not spin the screw forever and rip through your board or your plywood. You can see that the bevel head of this wood screw also allows the head of the screw to be countersinked into the wood giving you a nice clean finish. So your wood screw is going to be used anytime you want to affix something in the van to wood. For example, your walls or ceilings to your furring strips, uh, your plywood floor to furring strips, or just in general cabinet making, etc. Our second fastener is the sheet metal screw. Notice on our sheet metal screw, the threads go all the way to the head of the screw. And you can notice the thread per inch here. We have a finer thread per inch. Now these types of screws are used to affix sheet metal and they can be used to attach things to sheet metal. Now with a sheet metal screw, you're gonna to want to pre-drill the surface first. And I'm gonna do that using this multi-purpose drill bit here. An alternative is also the self-drilling screws. The edge there on the tip is designed to cut through the metal. We have self-drilling bolts here holding the air intake pipe, the exhaust pipe, and exhaust tip for the diesel heater. So our fourth fastener is the rivet. This is an exceptional method for attaching metal to metal. And I use this to create the bracing for my underslung water tank on the van. And I'll show you how these mate together. So rivets work in conjunction with a rivet gun. And you can see there are, on this particular rivet gun, there are various size tips. In this case, I'm using the yellow oranges tip. You can see the ring there. And that matches the type and size of rivet. And it's kind of color coded here, so it's hard to make a mistake. And you just take the you just remove whichever tip you need. In my case, it's already there, the yellowish orange tip. And you just want to insert the long end of the rivet into the rivet gun. And we've already pre-drilled our holes here. And we're just going to insert a rivet through our hole there. And we're just going to crank down on that until our tip breaks off. What is left is a nice strong connection between these two pieces of metal. One of the things you have to realize with rivets is they're fairly permanent unless you have a grinder. Uh, you can certainly grind these away and remove the rivets, but again, not as easy to remove as say a self-drilling screw or a sheet metal screw. And then you can see here, the tank support, the aluminum L bracket there, all held together with rivets. All right, so our fifth fastener is the plastic screw. Notice the tip of the plastic screw, it's made such that the screw does not melt plastic. It kind of bores through it and the threads on the plastic screw are a little bit more coarse so they're separated as far as threads per inch and notice the threads go all the way to the head of the plastic screw as well so the key here is to affix things to plastic without melting the plastic so you want to be careful with the speed at which you are using your drill the tips of these can be used to bore through some soft plastics 
but I like to pre-drill these. One of the areas that I've used these types of plastic screws is to affix furring strips to some of the interior trim and also install an amplifier under the console of the van. Okay, so our sixth fastener is these threaded inserts that can be used with wood and composites. You can see the teeth on the inserts here and those teeth bite into the wood and keep this threaded insert from spinning. Then you can screw or bolt to the threaded insert. So typically you can just use the bolt and that will pull the threaded insert into the wood and bite into the wood. Uh, sometimes you may need to use a hammer and actually hammer these in to the back side of the wood. Pretty much now you have the capability to, uh, to mount things. This is something that you can unbolt and bolt as needed. There are some threaded inserts. Those are actually holding up my hot water heater. So you can see the threaded inserts under there. Those threaded inserts are used to affix the bike clamps to the sliding drawer. All right, let's talk about our seventh fastener. And this is actually a DIY fastener. So this is just some strapping that was purchased at the local uh, store. Disregard these bolts here. I just didn't have one solid piece. Imagine if you were trying to install an underslung tank or hang a tank from the bottom of your van. You could easily use this strapping along with having the ends of it bent at 90 degrees here and place a bolt with some washers through both ends of the straps. Now you can use this bolt and nut to actually tighten the strap around the tank. So if you need a stronger strap, you can always double up the strap or even triple up the strap. And this is the method I use to install my gray water tank for the shower. Without this type of tank strap, and mechanism to really tighten this up around the tank. It's very difficult to uh, get a good secure connection with an underslung tank. This metal strap is fairly easy to work with too. You don't necessarily need a saw or grinder or metal cutting tool. You can use these 10 snips. All right, our eighth fastener is zip ties. Zip ties can be used in all kinds of scenarios. As a matter of fact, I just fixed my toilet lid with these zip ties because I have one of those Lugaloo toilets and uh, eventually what happens is the hinge, the plastic hinge that holds the seat cover on will break. So you can use zip ties through any hole to affix. Zip ties can be in a, used in a lot of different scenarios. I also um, have the heater vent zip tied to the rear of the van. But typically what you can do for, for things like that is just create yourself a slot in your metal or wood by drilling. I'm just going to demonstrate here on this uh, piece of cardboard. So I've got my, my slots here. And uh, then you can insert your ties through the slots there. And you can make the distance in between here different based on your needs. And... Uh, you can affix all types of things. Always keep these handy. They're good for organization. So they make these soft Velcro ties as well. It's good for uh, cable organization. So you can wrap these around your cables and don't have to worry about chafing. One of the other great things about zip ties is even though they come in all different lengths, if you don't have the correct length or if you need a longer zip tie, you can always connect multiple zip ties together like such and now you've doubled your length and you can keep chaining these together however you see necessary. So yeah, that's zip ties. Very basic, but you can use these for a lot of different things. All right, so the last three fasteners I'm gonna talk about, they're actually not fasteners at all. They're really bonders but nonetheless extremely useful in van build outs. The first one here is Velcro. Now I like to use this 3M dual lock Velcro 
Now Velcro is only as good as the adhesion of the Velcro on the back and as good as the strength of the lock of the Velcro together. So um, I like this particular Velcro and I use it in a lot of scenarios in the van. Uh, mainly to Velcro things to the back door or to the back door interior panels. Sometimes to uh, position some plastic cabinets. I may Velcro those to the wall to keep, keep them from moving while the van is in motion. So this particular 3M dual lock Velcro, it's pretty strong, especially when you're, you're talking about something hanging that's pulling down here. As long as your, your adhesion on the back is strong, now pulling apart, not so much. It's not the strongest Velcro there is, but there's all types of Velcro. I have some other industrial strength Velcro, but the key with this Velcro is, is that you want to prep the surface and make sure that the adhesive on the back of the Velcro sticks to the surface. And you want to do that by either sanding your wood with some sandpaper to prep it, or if you've got a metal surface, use some emery cloth to roughen up the metal. You can use a Scotch-Brite pad. After the surface is rough, you're gonna to wanna to clean the surfaces with some isopropyl alcohol and get it free of any oils and greases and sanding bits that are left over. And that's gonna promote good adhesion of the tape on the back. This is probably my favorite bonding adhesive and this is 3M VHB double-sided tape. This is some industrial strength stuff. It needs good preparation of the surfaces in order to maintain adhesion and that is super important when using this tape but i use this to adhere the solar panels to the top of the van so my solar panels are not screwed to the top of the van i don't have a rack it's expensive stuff but it does work and again prep is key here the other thing i mentioned about this type of double-sided tape is temperature it works much better if you apply this in a warmer temperature but uh, you can go by the manufacturer specifications just know it's going to be a little bit more pliable and bond a little easier when the temperature is higher all right so to wrap this up we're going to talk about 3m90 high strength contact adhesive i've used this to glue the interior insulation to the walls of the van I've used it to glue wood to wood. I've used it to glue hangers to the interior panels of the van door. Uh, this stuff works really well, but it is a contact adhesive and that means you need to spray both sides. Let's say I wanted to glue this piece of metal to this other piece of metal here. I would take my sandpaper, roughen that up really good. Do the same thing to my other piece of metal here. All right. And then once we get them roughed up, we're going to clean both sides off with some isopropyl alcohol. These cans have a nozzle that you can turn so you can have a vertical spread spray or horizontal spread spray. All right, I've got it set to horizontal now. I'm just going to hit my two pieces. With, and we're going to let that sit so we want that to get tacky. So I'm going to shoot for about 20 seconds and just uh, kind of test it and see how tacky it is. Let's just get her. Typically, I would apply some clamping pressure to that as well. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to show you how these two pieces of metal can be bonded together with 3M90. All right, we've been letting that sit for about a minute now, and you can see we have a nice, strong bond. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend trying to glue two pieces of metal together with 3M90. I'm just kind of showing you the adhesive properties here. Now, I wouldn't recommend this on metals i would use probably like some jb weld or even a spot weld if 3m90 is great stuff it, it can be used to cover uh your bed frame if you're going to cover it in some like kind of speaker material it can be used to adhere insulation to the van walls like i said i've i've adhered wood furring strips to the rear of the black plastic interior panels of the van as well as long as you prep the surface and you spray both sides because it is a contact adhesive and you follow all the rest of the manufacturer's suggestions, you're going to come out with a good strong bond. All right, so there you have it, 11 fasteners to help build out your van. So that's going to wrap this video up. Until next time, skill up and ride, van up and go. And just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.